When I took French class, my French teacher said one of the benefits of studying a foreign language is you get to see the world from somebody else's perspective. One thing I have found from my travels, and I will grant you I'm not the most well-traveled person, but I've gotten a start. I've been to Canada and also South Africa and Swaziland. Canada is not that much difference. The huge experience was going to Southern Africa. And one thing I've learned so far is in your society, there are things you consider unthinkable. There are things you consider absurd. But there's probably some culture out there that is practicing that. The biggest examples I saw of that in Southern Africa compared to our culture was polygamy. Here it's unthinkable. You can be thrown in jail for polygamy here. I think of Fred Phelps. He is an outcast in our society. But many of his beliefs, which we consider strange, are accepted in places around the world. In one of his speeches he gave in that film, Hate Mongers, which reveals the second thing I noticed between this society and Southern Africa is the issue of democracy. He doesn't talk tons of, on this from what I've gathered. But he did say in the film Hate Mongers that the problem with democracy is you can get a majority of people to overturn the world, word of God. So he's suggesting that the word of God stands regardless of popular vote. I think democracy is a problem because of its popularity. Something is not right or wrong as the philosophers have been saying forever just because it's popular. I think it's immoral to base a government on whether something's popular or not. Justice is justice whether 10 support it or 10 million support it. Southern Africa, they have traditions of monarchs. And I don't see a problem with that. If the monarch is benign, who cares if it's democratically elected or not? Cultures don't have to be foreign cultures, but they can be cultures within the United States. One culture that originated in the UK was the punk rock scene. I already gave another commentary on why I believe Westboro Baptist Church is very punk-like. They have signs that say, God hates your idols. They trample all over the US flag. Like no one else I've seen. They have more zeal about disrespecting the flag than anyone else. They are anti-everything and that is the essence of punk. Homosexuality is becoming well accepted in our society. Gay marriage is picking up steam. Westboro Baptist Church has a page God Hates the World where they talk about why God doesn't like these countries. Their main focus of concern, of course, is homosexuality. And they talk about how the nations support homosexuality or allow it. Some nations do not allow it. And they even praise them. They are not ones who give out praise easily. So that's a pretty big compliment. I even say for some of these pages, like for Yemen, they, God doesn't hate Yemen. God dislikes Lemon. And they, Yemen. And they have a similar page for Mozambique where they don't have too much bad to say. For some countries, they have tons of bad to say. 
There are countries all over the world that actually have the death penalty for homosexuality, which is Phelps' standard. So if you think it's pretty strange for somebody to come out and say death penalty for gays, guess what? There's countries in this world that do that. Calvinism is not terribly popular in the United States. I thought it was dead. Certainly, the version of Calvinism advanced by Westboro Baptist Church is very flamboyant compared to the more subdued types I would expect. I read that Westboro Baptist Church is called hyper-Calvinist. One big bone of contention they have with the rest of our society is over whether God loves everyone or not. It's election. They say God chose a few people to represent him and the rest are damned for hell. Thus, they are very selective about who they let in their ranks. The page... The right to be wrong.net says they rarely ever bring in new members, and I see from their memberships they don't. They brought Steve Drain in about a decade ago, but they generally don't. Are they close minded or are they smart? Virtually every good motivational work or even spiritual work I read says it's very important to choose your companions wisely. Your associates make or break you, they say. That's one lesson I've learned. I failed in the past at that, but nowadays I'm trying very hard to attract the right people. So I applaud them for that. Calvinism, from what I gather, is actually pretty prominent in South Africa. There it took a very evil form in the form of racism, apartheid. That's one thing Phelps and Westboro Baptist Church says God doesn't hate. He doesn't hate people because of their race, they say. So their version of Calvinism has nothing to do with race. From what I understand, not every Reformed church in South Africa supported apartheid, but there were some that did. And that certainly might be one interpretation of Calvinism that would lead somebody to that. The Phelps people say, God doesn't love everybody, God only loves a few. And this may sound really harsh, but all over in other religions, even Buddhism, they're saying that some people will get to nirvana, others won't. Clearly not everyone is cut out for everything, even most Mainstream Christians will say not everyone is good for everything and some are going to hell. Some philosophers say the only way you can have God is with predestination because if God knows something is going to happen, then it's fixed to happen. You think Fred Phelps and Westboro Baptist Church look awfully strange. I would encourage you to look at things in different eyes. I can't wait to travel more because it has the effect of breaking up strong aversions in your mind. And you get to see things differently. You start to not hate people like Fred Phelps because you know they could fit in. I remember seeing some very strong worded signs of a labor group in Swaziland. Those kind of signs don't go around here, but Phelps has strong signs. I'm not necessarily comparing the two, but that goes to show. Bold signs that compare a manager to one of the worst dictators, and Fred Phelps, God hates you, might be a comparison. <laughs> 